Everybody grab papers for us. So Half-term club for some of these children circle, is more than just a fun hour away from home. Oh, I love that. Blue from Man City. Some 71% of children living in poverty live in households where at least one adult works. That look any good? Liv Erin is barely out of childhood herself. My mum was a single parent to, to two kids, me and my twin brother. Um, she's somebody that, who struggled to find work. So for much of my childhood, she worked as a waitress. Long, long days. And, you know, the cost of childcare was just too ridiculous, too high unaffordable, so it meant that we went to work with her often. I mean, you know, 2023 and, and still we see children come through the doors every day, mentioning stuff that are happening at home, mentioning that they've not had the breakfast, they've not had the lunch, they haven't had anything to eat today. It's a horrible reminder that we, we're not really much further as we were when I was younger. Hot food at youth club will be today's only meal for some children. New figures show the total number of children experiencing poverty increased from 3.6 million two years ago to 4.2 million last year. The borough with the highest rate was Tower Hamlets in London, with nearly half of children there living in poverty. Meanwhile, in the North East and West Midlands, child poverty has risen by 9%, and in the East Midlands, by 7%. And inequality is in itself unequal. The figures show a link between children receiving disability living allowance and the rate of child poverty. And in every region in the UK, children from ethnic minority backgrounds are at a higher risk of living in poverty than children from a white background. Walking into the Hope Community Hub feels like walking into the local corner shop. And that's the point. 292 households in this part of Coventry are welcomed into what's known as the Social Security Supermarket. And one woman runs this hub. Yes, one. Any free items from, from there to there, yeah? Any free items, I'll hold the bag for you. Katie May has been coming Thank here you. for a year. Um, She's paid her £5 pounds and she'll get £40 pounds worth of shopping. We have our own house, we have a mortgage, but people, so people just assume we've got the money because we've got our own house, whereas we need the social supermarket and we go to our parents if we need help. She cares full-time for her mother and her fiancé works. They've got two children, one and three years old. What about the mental strain, Katie May? Is it something that sits with you if you're having to think about these things every day? Um, yeah, um... It's always there in the back of my mind, am I providing enough for them? Are they getting everything they need? Are they just being, being able to be children? Um, rather than having to worry about the issues that are going on so that they, they shouldn't need to worry about. We go without new clothes. Um, I, I've become well versed in sewing if a clothes got a hole in it. Um, his work clothes in particular have always got holes in, but we can't afford to buy new work clothes all the time, so it's often me sewing them up. During the pandemic, there was a £20 uplift in weekly universal credit. But when that stopped, child poverty levels shot up. Add to that rising food costs and a need for support. You can see why this one woman has a lot to think about. Still, her focus is on the families she's come to know so well. We have some people who just are so overwhelmed, they come in and cry because it's not what they expect um, and they were at that lowest crisis point. We think the shop setup is important. Um, if you're going to a food bank or acting a service like that, you're being given a bag of food. Here we're set up as a little supermarket, gives those people that dignity of being able to shop and make those food choices for their families. While we filmed here, people came by and chatted to Caroline like she was an old friend. This is evidently a place for connection too. Ria Chatterjee reporting. Well, we asked the government for an interview. They declined, but told us they'd helped nearly 2 million people, including 400,000 children, out of absolute poverty after housing costs since 2010 and have launched a £94 billion cost of living support package worth £3,300 on average per household. This is why, they said, we are boosting our childcare offers, made changes to universal credit and an unprecedented increase to the national living wage. Well, joining me now is Joseph Howes, chief executive of the children's charity Buttle UK and chair of the End Child Poverty Coalition. What do you make of that government response to your analysis? 
I, 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 we appreciate, I mean, certainly the childcare support um, is appreciated, but we think the government just needs to go further than that. And there's a real clear policy change that could be made. It could dra drag 250,000 children out of poverty immediately, and that is to scrap the two-child limit. Just explain that. That's the limit well, the on benefits. Limit. So, so the two-child limit is essentially uh, removes benefits from uh, any uh, child uh, beyond the second child in any in any household. So, um, third, fourth, fifth child, you wouldn't get any benefits um, for those children. So, yeah, and, and predictably, your, your analysis shows that bigger families are more at risk of being in poverty. Yeah, that, that's absolutely the case. And and as you'd highlighted earlier, that. Um, you know, if, if the government's um, aim within that policy is to ensure that uh, um, parents go out and work, essentially what we're saying is, from the stats, work isn't, isn't the thing that is really, really helping here. 71% of those children are in working households. At least one parent is working. Can you also just explain this sort of apparent clash in the figures where, by you say relative poverty has gone up uh, by millions, and the government says uh, the number of people in absolute poverty has gone down. The, the rel relative poverty and absolute poverty, they're, they're two different things, of course. Um, with absolute poverty, you're basing that back on figures in 2010-11, and it's based on 60% of the median income <laughs> in a household. Um, with, rel with relative poverty, uh, we're basing that, it's affected by the economy now, that's why we use that figure, and it's based on um, on the figures of today. So we use relative poverty, our data uses government data, um, it's, it's what's called the HBAI data, um, and they stood by that data, they publish that every year, the DWP publishes it, and that's why we use it, because we want to use the data that government stands by. Given benefits were risen by inflation, um, and things like the national living wage went up, you know, by, by the largest amounts um, in, in modern times. Why has there been this big increase? You know, where, where is that big increase or, you know, big loss in household incomes come? It, it, whilst benefits were, were increased, absolutely, and it was but a year after we saw the, the uh, rate increase in inflation still. I mean, the, the real challenge here is about that working not pay. You know, there, there's 12% there's, uh, of the working um, population that aren't actually getting paid the minimum wage. So we've got to tackle that. And we've got to ensure that people doing really challenging work, certainly um, social work, care work, are getting paid what they absolutely should get paid and respected for it. Joseph House, thank you very much indeed.